Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're discussing the future of the Necrons. Now the Tyranids have arrived in the galaxy. No need for a spoiler warning today, so let's waste no time and just jump straight in. Now, undoubtedly, one of my favourite developments in the lore over the recent years has been the emergence and return of the Silent King. When GW dropped that teaser trailer scrolling across the Necron hieroglyphics, oh man, that was goosebump raising to say the least. You felt on the verge of a truly momentous event, a literal figure of legend returning to the galaxy. I still get that little feeling now if I rewatch it. It just sets the scene and builds the tension perfectly. The reasons for Sarek's return has always been kept a little vague and mysterious. And there's certainly hints and teases that not everything regarding the Silent King is quite as it seems. However, it's largely referred to that he saw the truth of the Tyranid race within the Void realizing the doom it promised for his galaxy and his people, he returned to prepare the Infinite Empire to face this threat. However, of course, since then, he's actually appeared to have his hands full in unexpected ways. The first is no longer having his command protocols across the Empire. The dynasties have far from bent the knee in servitude. Some, of course, realising the power Sarek wields, have. Others, as is the Faron way, bartered their way into power, agreeing allegiance for benefits in return. And for the most part, the Silent King has had to resort to that Necron politicking to secure dynastic loyalties, whereas other notable holdouts have resorted to conflict or cold wars of sorts, such as Imotek the Stormlord, for example, who views himself as the rightful ruler of the Necron Empire. However, at last mention and sighting of the Silent King within White Dwarf a few months ago now, it certainly appeared and felt like he'd largely reasserted his control over most of the dynasties at least Imotech aside. The second and more relevant issue is Sarek returned to find the galaxy crumbling apart, the Immaterium flooding out in unstoppable waves and literally the galaxy torn in two. As a result, far from preparing for the Tyranids' arrival, the Silent King's efforts have been spent establishing anti-warp nexuses to reverse and calm the flood of the Immaterium. As of yet, we don't quite know the success of this grand plan, most of them still believed to be active war zones against the Imperium. I'm hoping for some kind of reference or mention in the next Belisarius Call novel out soon, as it very much appears to be continuing Call's quest within the Necron technology area. Yet, for all Sarek's efforts to save the galaxy from chaos, or more appropriately, his infinite empire from chaos, the Tyranids have now arrived in force. And in being another tendril of Leviathan, it raises the terrifying possibility of the magnitude of this high fleet, being something beyond immense perhaps the kind of force which led to Sarek returning in the first place. And so this raises the question of what is Sarek going to do? What is going to be his priority? Now the Tyranids have truly arrived, will he alter his plan? Well, of course the arrival of the Tyranids doesn't remove the threat of chaos. It's simply just another thing to worry about. So my gut reaction would be to say no. At present, as grave a threat as the Tyranids are, 
perhaps far more a threat in Sarek's mind than even Chaos. They are at present far on the Galactic West, whereas Chaos, the Immaterium, is everywhere. It's a far more present danger. There's a reason Sarek has established his anti-warp nexuses across the entire galaxy, because that's how far reaching the devastation of Chaos is. It's no good for Sarek to try and control one portion of it. He's got to stop and stem the flood everywhere. And so this represents a far more immediate threat. The Cicatrix Maldictum has cut through several dynastic territories, with countless tomb worlds lost or railing against the assault. There are countless more dynasties across the Great Rift within Imperium Nihilus. No, the Necrons never used or needed the Emperor's Astronomicon, but it's a simple fact now, without it, the Immaterium is running rampant within the darkness. The boundary between the material galaxy and the Immaterium is virtually shredded, demons materializing with ever greater ease. Quite simply, Sarek hasn't had a choice in the matter. He's had to deal with it himself. Because the lesser races have failed, there's no other way to say it. For millions of years, the Necron technology held the Immaterium at bay. Millions of years. Humanity has managed barely a few thousand before the whole galaxy has fallen apart. If Sarek doesn't stop this problem, there won't be an empire left to save from the Tyranids. However, of course there's a however. It's clear to me that the Tyranids do represent the real threat in Sarek's eyes. And this arrival not only will have been noticed, but it'll most likely have come far earlier than he would have wished. There is also the added problem of although the majority of awakened tomb worlds dominate the east of the galaxy, some are located and awakened on the west. The Tok, Ogdebek, and Sarnek dynasties in particular, all laying in the direct path of Leviathan. It's also worth remembering the Necron Empire stretched the full length of the galaxy. Barely the smallest portion of them have awakened thus far. Just because places aren't labelled as tomb worlds or dynastic territory doesn't mean they aren't. For every world or system the Tyranids eradicate, the Necrons are losing just as much as the Imperium of Mankind, if not more so. The question is, are these dynasties in the immediate path of Leviathan important enough for Sarek to change his plans, to intervene straight away? Obviously, we don't really know at this point, but I'm going to say I'm not sure they are. However, equally, I don't think Sarek would want to lose any tomb worlds or dynasties to the fate of the Tyranids either. It's undoubtable the Silent King would far rather use the lesser races to do his fighting for him if he can. Get them to waste their lives and resources over his own. See his allegiance with Dante previously against the original Tendril of Leviathan, for example, where he tricked the Blood Angels into dealing with the Tyranids for him. Given that track record, maybe at present, Sarek will be content to let the Imperium waste its resources attempting to stop or at least slow down the Tyranid advance leaving him time to attempt to fix the flood of the warp. It is a risky strategy, one that could cost him several dynasties if it fails. However, considering he's yet to fix the Imhotek problem either, still the most powerful dynasty going, what choice does he have? 
Perhaps now with the true threat arriving, we'll see Sarek become far more motivated, far more active across the galaxy. Taking the kid gloves off so to speak, and finally getting serious. Unleashing the full potential of his power, showing the galaxy why they should fear the Silent King. Maybe we'll even see Imhotek's resistance ended, one way or the other, as Sarek finally unifies his race once again. One thing's for sure with the arrival of Leviathan, the countdown has begun. Sarek no longer has time to waste, preparing his race for this war, because the war has finally arrived. Will he attempt to solve the chaos issue first? Will he use the lesser races to stall the Tyranids while he does so? Or will he finally show the galaxy the Silent King's true power? We could be about to find out. But as always everyone, what do you think? How do you think Sarek is going to react to the arrival of Leviathan? Is this going to be the moment he finally unleashes his true power across the galaxy? Is this the moment he realises time is truly running out, even for an immortal race? Or given his intellect, his cunning strategy we've seen thus far, will we see him keep to his plan, remain focused on chaos, and use the Imperium to hold the Tyranids at bay? whilst he does so. As always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.